how to become a stunt double and how to become a stunt man. That's what we'll answer in today's video. Hi, my name is Dylan Wilson with CBT Stunt Alliance. Train hard, perform easy. We help actors, stunt performers, filmmakers, and content creators learn professional stunt training to leverage in film, TV, and live action entertainment performances. Before we get underway, if you'd like to learn how you can launch your career in professional stunts or grow your current career to the next level, check out our highly popular pro stunt training at prostunttraining.com. You can learn stunts, falls, tactical firearms training, sword fighting, martial arts, fighting for camera, exotic weapons, and more. You can sign up now and start training now. Go to prostunttraining.com or simply click on the link below this video. So we get a lot of questions like how to become a stunt double, how to become a stunt man, and even how to become a stunt actor. So we'll share with you the things that we know to help you along the way. So we'll start with the first question. What is a stunt double? So a stunt double is a professional stunt man or stunt performer, which is the correct term, who performs high risk action sequences for the actor. Now, because they're highly trained, you know, they can do, you know, a variety of, of different uh, action sequences to keep the actor safe. The reason why is, think about it, if the actor performs their own stunts and they get injured because they don't train or practice for the, if they do train and they're really good at it, if they get injured, the whole production shuts down. This is what something that happened with Tom Cruise on that uh, Mission Impossible movie that he did. He got injured and I think production shut down for an entire year. And it threw everyone into chaos because you have people who are committed for a certain amount of time for that project, right? They got that, that time blocked off and then all the other projects they schedule afterwards. Well, when he got injured, production ceased. So all the people who were supposed to get paid and work on that project don't because the production stopped and it threw off their entire timetable. So it was really a nightmare for a lot of people involved with the project. Yeah, Tom Cruise likes doing his own, his own uh, uh, stunts and he's, you know, the bankable actor. So, you know, there's two sides of that. You know, yeah, that's the reason why. So if an actor gets injured, production ceases and everyone can lose their jobs. So that's why the, the uh, stunt double is there because if the stunt double gets injured, the production continues. They just bring in another stunt double. <laughs> it's just, just the nature of it. And the, the other thing is with a, a stunt double, their face isn't visible in camera. So usually it's some clever camera work where you're only seeing like the back of their head or something and maybe a little piece of the side of their face. They may, they may even have a wig on or even some makeup or something. So that ideally the audience can't tell that it's a stunt double, that the illusion of the actor doing the stunts is actually what's maintained. I have actually stunt doubled people before, looked nothing like them. They were a different ethnicity than me. Yet because I could do, you know, some acrobatic move that they wanted for the shot, you know, they dressed me up and we were able to uh, to make it work. So that's the key thing is that's what a stunt double does. Stunt double does is they make the actor look amazing without the audience knowing that it's not the actor actually doing it. So question two, what does a stunt double do? So if you're wondering what a stunt double does, it's literally the same thing as a professional stunt man or stunt performer. It's the same job. You just made up to look like someone else. So there's no difference. Uh, depending on the scene that they're in, stunt doubles can perform, you know, throwing punches in, or in a fight scene, receiving punches, getting beaten up in a fight scene, you know, getting, you know, pushed into a wall, slammed into a door, falling on the floor. It could be them driving a car at high speed. It could be them doing car stunts where they're jumping, you know, stuff or, you know, doing forward 180s or reverse 180s. They could be hanging from a building. I actually uh, coordinated a project like that. We had someone hanging out of a, a second story window. You know, it's all those type of things that could endanger the actor. So it's all the cool stuff, like the fight stuff and everything, like memorizing fight choreography and then even rehearsing fight sequences. Yet it's also kind of like the boring kind of mundane stuff too. A stunt performer is boring, you know, where you just, you know, in a body harness, hanging out of a window. <laughs> it's not, I mean, you know, it, it doesn't sound very exciting because it isn't, right? And the, uh, what's another one? Sometimes, oh, I remember like a, a, a buddy of mine, 
I'm not gonna say who, who the actor is that he stunt double. It's a famous actor, real famous actor, older, and you know, the, like the scenes for them at their age was they're pretty much laying on the floor, like their wheelchair might fall over or something, and they're laying on the floor. He stunt doubled them. And uh, had a nice contract though, made a lot of money doing it, yet, you know, very boring kind of stuff. So it's whatever puts the actor at risk is when they'll bring the, the stunt double in. Question three, how do you get jobs as a stunt double? All right, so we're gonna share a few ways on how to actually get jobs. Yet the thing to understand is a stunt double is generally selected by a production stunt coordinator who's responsible for casting and choreographing the action. And so realistically what you do is just try to get booked for stunt work. It's the same you know, sort of thing, and we'll touch on this a bit later, you know, yet um, all it takes is for the stunt coordinator to notice some similarity between you and the lead or the actor they need a stunt double for. And, you know, and that could pretty much be it. Also, uh, you want to build and maintain relationships with those stunt coordinators. Because once they work with you the first time and they know how you are to work with, you're, you know, good to be on, good to have on set. You know, you know all the safety regulations and they're comfortable with you you know, they're going to want to hire you time and time again. So there's always relationship building is should always be the foundation of any successful marketing plan, especially in this business. Uh, being listed in stunt performer casting sites and even stunt association rosters works immensely well because when a time comes for them to cast for someone, it's helpful when they can just go to a a website where stunt performers are, and there's always, you know, your pick, your headshots are gonna be up there, as well as the skills that you have, you know, and they can go and look right at your photo. Man or woman, they look at your photos, look at your skills, and they, and they just, they can pick you up. I've done that myself when I when I needed to cast uh, stunt doubles for various projects, and it, it works immensely well. Uh, in addition, depending on where you are in the world, joining unions helps. Anything that you can do that puts your, your name and your face out there, so that it makes it easier for people to find you, the better. And that's why any associations, unions, things like that, were because that's where stunt coordinators, even productions are going to turn to when they need a stunt double. They're always going to go to a place that's reputable and where they have a good amount of options. And so these types, anything like that that you can think of is where they're going to go. Even uh, some Facebook groups, you know, you have more, you know, uh, uh, sometimes stunt coordinators post in there if they're not able to find you know, what they're looking for. Rarely though. Yeah, productions definitely do. And so even being in certain Facebook groups, you can actually find stunt double work as well. In addition, um, a good thing to know, we'll say this is, this is a pro tip for you. Looking like a famous actor helps big time. Right, so if people, if you notice that people keep saying, oh, you look just like this person, or just like that person, you need to get into stunt doubling, right? And when we get to how much money you can make, you'll understand why. Yet, if you get that, then you definitely wanna do that. I have a, uh, a colleague, she looks just like, I'm not gonna say her name, yet she looks like, uh, literally just like Zoe Zaldana, right? Spitting image. I mean, everywhere she goes, people stop her and want to get her autograph. <laughs> she was even saying one time she was at the gas station and you know people walking up to her and stuff. She's like, I'm not Zoe Zaldana, you know. Yeah, if you get that from any actor, you know, you need to contact an agent right away because you got a career. There were people, if you remember during the President Obama administration, who looked kind of like President Obama and made careers, a lucrative career, just impersonating him, right? So if you, the same thing is the case with this. If you look like any famous actors or anything, uh, you definitely want to uh, to contact an agent, let them know. Years ago, when Cuba Gooding Jr. had a uh, career was still going, I could, you know, I was approached by stunt coordinators before to stunt double him. You know, my hair was different and everything. And uh, yet I could have yet. If you do look like someone, that's, that's definitely going to be a big help. Uh, something else, another way you get gigs. Some stunt doubles have dwarfism, meaning that they're little people, right? And they oftentimes have very good careers because they serve as stunt doubles or stand-ins for children and babies. You know, I, again, I have, you know, some buddies who... And I'm thinking of right now, work consistently. All the Disney movies, you know, all the Nickelodeon stuff, you know, when all those kids, 
if there's any sort of uh, dangerous or physical scene, they don't wish to endanger a child. There's even more rules, you know, governing children on, on a set than, than adults. So they bring in the the uh, the the, uh, the stand-ins or the, the stunt doubles. So even if, if you're a little person or you know someone that is, they can get plenty of work, you know, as a as an actual uh, stunt double. A couple other things, you know, some stunt doubles uh, begin their careers as children, you know, and although kids tend not to do as much dangerous stuff, there is physical stuff. Like, you know, so if a kid is already training in martial arts or they do gymnastics or something, then they could stunt double another child who's in a project that calls for that. You know, even if they're like, again, the martial arts thing, knowing how to do landings or, or falls or break falls and things, they can bring in, you know, that child to, um, to be a stunt double or stand in, you know, for, you know, sequences like falling or even climbing, you know, something like that. So if you have a child who is in martial arts or, you know, uh, anything else, does gymnastics or does, you know, you know uh, skateboard stunts and things like that, you can put them as a stunt double because they can get cash for that, you know, for other kids. And the last thing is sometimes with some stunt doubles, it's because they're related to the actor. You know, like, so like if your brother or your sister is an actor in a project and you look like them, well, hey, it's just natural for them to bring you in. You know, and this has happened with, you know, a, many famous actresses and actors and actresses is because they have like, usually a brother or a sister. Sometimes it could be, a, you know, a cousin or something that looks a lot like them. And then that's how they wind up getting brought into the stunt double and booking the gig. Question four, how much does the stunt double get paid? All right, now this is all over the board. And again, it's gonna vary depending on where you are in the world. Yet in the US, there's what's known as union work and non-union work. And you know, there's pluses and minuses to each one. There's always a lot more non-union work than union work. At union work, you tend to theoretically have safer working conditions because there's more vetting going on and um, minimal pay minimal standards so that people can't pay you under a certain standard, like a minimum wage essentially, right? So for non-union work, it can be a couple hundred bucks per day, up to over a thousand dollars per day. Many, a good number of TV shows that you watch, TV series are non-union, right? So they may pay the same amount that unions, uh, that union, that a union gig would pay. So anywhere from a couple hundred bucks over a thousand bucks a day, depending on what you're doing. Now for union work, Again, um, it varies as well because there's, I won't get too much into this now, they're called collective bargaining agreements in the US for, for the SAG, Screen Actors Guild. Yet there's different budgets and there's, so there's different minimums. For, um, for a stunt double, it can range from anywhere from a, a couple hundred dollars to once again, $1,100 or more per day. It all depends on the the uh, collective bargaining agreement. So if it's like, if it's a movie that has a budget of like $20,000 or I mean, the standards might be different now, you have $20,000 or less, then, you know, the minimum pay is like maybe two something, you know, 250 or something like that. They may, can pay you more, yeah, that's the, they can't pay you less than that. And so with each successive budget, you know, uh, moderate, low budget, you know, low budget, stuff like that, the pay increases. You can easily contact a uh, SAG and they can they can let you know what the scale is. And even on their website, you can do some research. Easier to call them and they can let you know what the pay is for each uh, collective bargaining agreement. Yet the ideal one is theatrical. And the, usually with the theatrical, the minimum pay for a stunt performer right now is a, a little under $1,100 per day. So that's 1100 bucks per day, even if you're just sitting on set. Like that one buddy I told you about, you know, Stand does stand and work for you know like a really old actor <laughs> who just lays on the floor like he fall, fall out of his wheelchair you know he's getting like you know a thousand dollars or more per day for doing that for months on end you know depending how long it takes for uh, to actually shoot the scenes so uh, the other thing to know is a lot of ladies do really well with stunt double a lot of my friends that are ladies uh, the majority of them are stunt performers and they always book work because there's so many projects that women are in and they tend not to be the ones sh shot out of a cannon. They're usually, you know, getting like lifetime, they might slap each other or, you know, fall on the ground or crash and get pushed into a wall. 
you know, there's something like that. And there's there, those kind of things are common. And because of that, that means there's a lot of stunt doubling work for the ladies. I mean, watch your, think about your favorite TV shows and movies. Observe what happens to the women in it. Not, they're not like Marvel movies where the women are you know, getting kicked out of a window of a 10 story, you know, uh, skyscraper. It's, you know, the bread and butter kind of stunts, which is what most stunt professional stunt performers do. So a lot of ladies get booked for, for work. So if you're thinking about uh, becoming a stunt double, you're a lady, go in full speed ahead. Question five, what stuntman skills do you need to have to be a stunt double? Well, to become a stunt double, ideally see our previous video blog post entitled How to Become a Stunt Performer. Remember, that's the correct title, is Stunt Performer. And this break, we break it down step by step. I mean, in, in you know, intimate detail. Here's what you need to do from A to Z, suit to nuts, you know, to actually become a stunt performer. It's a very popular blog field. People share it a lot. Uh, very informative. It even covers how to actually market yourself, which is one of the most important skills. You can be the most highly skilled stunt performer, you know, or stunt double walking around. Yet, if no one knows about you, then you have no career. So uh, you can find a link to this that video blog post below this video. You just click and go right there and read it. Yet some other you know uh, skills and things are you know come from let's say if you do uh, martial arts training, martial arts is is important because you're going to be doing a lot of fighting. That's probably like the most common stunt or is uh, fighting for camera or fight choreography. Whether you're beating someone up or getting beaten up, that, that's like the bread and butter, right? The other is uh, even doing some acrobatics. I say acrobatics more so than gymnastics because more free running and parkour uh, relates more to film better than gymnastics. Gymnastics, I mean, you're, 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 you're used to training in a gym, a gymnasium, which has all types of mats and pads and everything else where free runners and parkour people just train out in the world. And that's more, that's more uh, what it's like to do stunts. You're not gonna have big thick mats and stuff that you're gonna that'll cushion your fall, you know, out in the real world. So uh, I'd say acrobatics, you know, or gymnastics are good. Um, even if you have like a driving background, if you, you know, you ride motorcycles, you know, you've taken some type of training with, uh, you know, with cars, you can do car stunts and things. Those are good. You know, also uh, you're gonna need to train regularly. This is what does it for some people is that they don't like going to a uh, to the gym. Yet all the stunt doubles, like we have a bunch of guys in our team stunt double people. One, one of my buddies on, on our stunt team, he stunt doubles so many actors, it's ridiculous. And he's at the gym like maybe four days a week, right? Because he has to be in shape. Even the actors he stunt doubles aren't even as good a shape as him. Sometimes they have to put a fat suit on him to match the, the people, because he's a bigger guy, so he stunt doubles bigger guys, right? And he does, and sometimes it's not even, he's not even doing action sequences, he's literally sitting in a car because the actor doesn't feel like sitting in a car. <laughs> right, a car is in a, you know, they're getting some, some shots of the car, you know, and the sun's out, and the actor's like, it's hot out today, I'm not sitting in that car. Maybe call for the stand-in, boom, 1,100 bucks a day, right? So, yet the gym is important. And it's for women and men, you gotta maintain your, your physical endurance because you have to do the stuff that the actor's not going to do. Most of these actors don't work out. Yeah, they gotta look like, you know, they're in peak physical form, you know, beating people up and chopping them up with swords and shooting them up and all this type of stuff. And that would be your job, you know, to do that. Now, one way that you can also learn uh, some of the skills is going to a stunt uh, workshop or a stunt seminar. Don't ask me why it's a bad thing to call something a stunt school. It's just something about this industry. Right? If I'm gonna go into that in this video. Stunt workshop, stunt seminar. <laughs> right? Don't call it a stunt school, whatever you do, right? So stunt workshops and stunt seminars are great. Do them because you will learn the skills and ideally they're usually taught by stunt coordinators, right? And uh, they're the ones who are going to teach you the skills that you need to be successful in, in this career. So uh, that's the, really a good place to train because all, all the other places that I mentioned, they don't know what it's like to work on a film set. They're just going to teach you parkour or martial arts and stuff. And it's not quite the same yet. Someone uh, at a stunt workshop or stunt seminar, and you go to several of them, not just one, right? 
when uh, when you do that, they're going to be your training is going to be focused for for film and TV. So make sure you like this video and smash that subscribe button so you don't miss out any future content. If you have any other tips that you like to share or even some ideas that you like us to cover in future videos, leave them in the comments below. Also, make sure you sign up for our Pro Tips email newsletter to get professional stunt training tips in your inbox. Lastly, if you like more information on our highly popular Pro Stunt Training classes, go to ProStuntTraining.com or click on the link below this video. Prepare to have your mind blown. Again, my name is Dylan Wilson with CBT Stunt Alliance. Train hard, perform easy. Don't miss our next video where we share another Pro Stunt Training tip. See you next video.